Would you like to incorporate details into your artwork that invoke the Art Nouveau style? Well, today I have some tips on how you can do exactly that. Hi folks, I'm Chris, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. When you hear the words Art Nouveau, what do you see in your mind? You probably immediately think of posters by Alphonse Mucha. You know, the women in long white dresses with too much fabric and their hair curling around them like they're floating underwater in the middle of a circular background composition. And Mucha's women are gorgeous, no doubt about it. But there is so much more to the Art Nouveau than just pretty ladies. Art Nouveau as a movement stemmed from a philosophy that is as relevant today as it was at the turn of the 20th century. The, it's actually an umbrella term for a group of separate movements that advocated for the exaltation of craft art, capital A, uh, with an emphasis on incorporating organic forms into everyday life by using industrial machinery and materials to create and replicate fantastic hand-worked objects. Now, it evolved from the arts and crafts style, which was itself a reaction to the decimation of the decorative arts by the cold mass production of the Industrial Revolution. And we're at this point again today. The digital revolution has brought us to a point where all types of content can be mass produced, even cutting artists and artisans and writers and musicians out of the process entirely. We found ourselves in a time when our experience is largely homogenous. It's featureless, formulaic, algorithmic, tick-tockable. Uh, TV shows and movies are frequently interchangeable with just enough variation to create the illusion that we've chosen what to watch. We all, and we all have the same Ikea shelves, just in different colors. Chain stores and restaurants shape our expectations. Now, to be clear, none of these things or places are inherently bad for being overplayed. I mean, look, I have the same shelves behind me, and I love them. Uh, but it's no surprise that in this environment, we reach for something that reminds us that there's more to life than commuting fast food and Netflix. And this is where we fall down. Most of the attempts to harken back to the Art Nouveau as a modern trend have focused on copying Mucha's ladies very closely, ignoring the wider movement in favor of the same kind of homogenization that we're familiar with in the rest of our life, which is ironically antithetical to the movement's very origins. So today I want to show you a few ways that you can invoke the Art Nouveau aesthetic without just copying Mucha's style. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list of details of the historical movement, rather it's a tour of the aesthetic choices that you can make today to make modern viewers think of Art Nouveau and its philosophy. First, circular focal elements. In composition, your image should have a main focal element that is elliptical, circular, or an arch, whether literally a circle or in the general flow of the background. Two, symmetrically asymmetrical. They often employ the layout that I think of as symmetrically asymmetrical. Mirroring and center alignments are common, but the primary subject and the pattern that inhabits the space is itself asymmetrical. Simple blocking with intricate details. Pick just one or a couple of objects or figures for the foreground and keep their placement simple. The background will almost always be abstract or a pattern based on natural motifs rather than representative. There's usually not a lot of depth or perspective in the subjects and that includes their placement with respect to each other. Additional interest can be added to the background through geometric sectioning and mid-image borders. These simple placements are then couched in an abundance of fine detail. When in doubt, add another strand of hair, or vine, or leaf. So long as you respect the other principles, it's practically impossible to add too much detail. Four, curvilinear flow. Each section of the background will have its own curvilinear flow, and the subjects will also have their own flow. These may flow together or be layered, depending on the effect that you're aiming for. Five, break borders. Depth is created by breaking the edges of the borders. A subject that extends beyond a border will appear to be in front of whatever it's crossing. There's also some symbolism here. The movement was about breaking down boundaries, so of course literally breaking the boundaries is a feature of the style. Six, French curves. Possibly the single most recognizable characteristic of Art Nouveau is the use of segments of Euler spirals or clothoids, better known as French curves. Now I'm not gonna try to explain the math behind a Euler spiral. The relevant information here is that before computer-aided design, French curves were used in drafting to draw any kind of irregular curve by hand. Contrary to what you'll hear in some videos, the term clothoid does not mean that they pertain to tailoring or cloth. It comes from the Greek name clotho, who spins the threads of fate. 
spirals, spinning, you know? Some fashion designers do use French curves as a tool in their drawings for ease in replicating a curve, but that's not where the term comes from. I suspect that the prevalence of French curves is related to their ubiquity on a craftsman's draft table and the desire to make the same curve repeatable in different areas of the image. It's much easier with a French curve than trying to freehand it, especially in architecture and objects, which wouldn't be in turn produced through industrial means like lamps and furniture. Seriously, if you want to invoke Art Nouveau, invest in some French curves and use them liberally. 7. Woven details. Linear details like vines and hair will frequently weave like knotwork, especially in the background, following a flow that twists through the piece like an old, slow river in a meadow. 8. Whiplash lines. When drawing details, think of winding vines, meandering streams, coiled snakes, or the curls and curves of leaves and flowers. Apply this to everything, not just the plants in the image. Hair and fabric especially should be drawn extra voluminous with vine and grass-like sinuousness. These are also referred to as whiplash lines. This is another time to whip out your French curves. 9. Natural motifs. Leaves, vines, flowers, branches, and other natural motifs are the primary background and border motifs. 10. Peacocks. While all natural motifs are fair game, the specific shapes associated with the peacock were very common, especially tail feathers and the uh, rounded eye shapes on the tail feather. 11. Human and animal figures. Where humans and animal figures are present, they often flow with the rest of the piece and may be stylized along lines that emphasize flow and grace over photorealism. Human subjects are usually feminine. Now, the curves that make up the style are generally more in line with the shape of a feminine body, but the real reason is that Art Nouveau styles develop through advertising and decorative arts that could be mass produced for low and middle class consumers. And the producers tended to view women of the time as the drivers of those purchases. You might liken Art Nouveau images to the Instagram lifestyle influencers of today. 12, avoid straight lines. Some of the various movements that are now grouped under Art Nouveau did use a lot of straight edge geometric shapes, especially squares. However, if you're trying to connote Art Nouveau to your viewers today, I would avoid using them much. Reserve them for effect. Too many flat straight lines and geometric shapes will make your viewer think of Art Deco instead, which has a whole different set of connotations. When you do use them, use them in service of the flow I mentioned earlier as borders or as components in man-made objects. Any natural objects that are a straight line, like a tree trunk, will have irregularities or curves in the line. 13. Line width and color. Line widths are variable but smooth. For the varying widths of decorative lines, consider the movement of the flow in that area and think of it like a river. Where there's a curve, the water backs up in the curve and just before it. Where there's a longer, straighter area, the water picks up speed and stays to the center, thinning to nothing at the end. So reserve your heaviest lines to outline the subject of the piece. Use medium width lines for the outlines of other objects and use the lightest lines for details. Lines are usually black or a dark color, but they can be any color so long as they provide a strong contrast to the background. You can also forego the lines, so long as your shapes are cutouts with high contrast. Usually this only applies to backgrounds when outlining every detail would risk making the background too dark, but there are some examples of this in the subject as well. 14. Natural dreamy colors. The palette of the Art Nouveau took its inspiration from the same natural motifs that they used in their backgrounds. When choosing colors, think about what you'd see if you walked out into a forest or into a field and constrain yourself to only the colors you'd see there. 15. Flat color. Colors in the Art Nouveau movement are usually flat for practical reasons. The style is most common in offset printed posters and lithography, architecture, and decorative objects all of which were new technology and processes at the time. In all of these, a single layer of material or ink creates the color and gradation within the layer is almost impossible. And so here you can see all of these principles in action. I've included all of them in one piece here as an example, but you don't need to use all of them to bring Art Nouveau and all of the ideas and feelings that it invokes in your viewers into your artwork. I challenge you to pick just two or three items that I've listed here and do a brand new artwork that incorporates them. Share it below or tag me at Chris Odenkirk on Instagram or Tumblr. I'd love to see what you create. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, don't forget to click the bell. I'll see you next time. Until then, 
Happy painting and may all your projects be creative. Ubiquity on a craftsman drafts, craftsman's, craftsman's draft table. Why do I write myself tongue twisters? When you hear the words Art Nouveau, what do you think of in your mind? What do you think of in your mind? <laughs> Where else would you think of it? Art Nouveau as movement stems from a philosophy that has a bird screaming in the background. Women in Art white dresses with too much fabric, and their hair floating around them like they're underwater. 